This is a little project I set up uh, just to play around with some of the uh, multiplane uh, features in Animate. And you can see it's just a pinball kind of zooming down uh, toward the end of the table here. And the cool thing about this is that uh, these elements on stage are not uh, the things that are scaling or moving forward. Okay, so it's the actual camera, all right, uh, that is animating forward. And of course, the ball is moving too, but uh, the paddles and the uh, flipper, they're just staying in place. So if you want to take a look at uh, some of the source file for this here, you can see uh, that, uh, well, a little bit just of the organization here. Here's the ball. This is the and then kind of the main thing uh, moving, going down. And it's actually changing its uh, Z depth uh, as it goes backward. So uh, it really doesn't matter, uh, again, where the uh, ball is um, or the ball layer is uh, uh, stacked. Okay, so even if I were to move this up above, let's say the bumpers and the flippers, you can see that it's not visually making any sort of change here on the stage like that. Okay, so it just goes down again, does the same thing, it's in front of the same things as it was before. Uh, so you can kind of get out of this mindset of having to, to always um, consider your uh, your layers as uh, your hierarchy guide. Let me just get that back to how I had it before. Uh, let me just undo that. And uh, another big thing that I like is that uh, your filters uh, become uh, these layers of their own too. So they're kind of like these um, uh, parents with children. So I've dragged uh, my bumpers, my flippers, the ball, these things with uh, underneath this blur layer here. Um, and so whatever is uh, going on with the blur layer, uh, these will be affected by it. So when I start things off here, this blur has a radius of two. And if I were to click over here to the render view, you'd actually uh, see that come into play. And then you can change uh, just the blur independent of all your objects over time. So that's a very easy way of controlling uh, everything at once. Okay, so I don't have to go and adjust the blurring on every single one of these objects and layers. I've just got it all contained uh, into this one little area here. And at any time, of course, you can always go play around with all the different effects. They are down uh, there, if you're looking for them. And then, uh, let's see, this is getting cut off a little bit, but um, you can see at the very bottom here is uh, my camera layer. There we go. And uh, if you are going to do this uh, on your own to uh, animate a camera, one thing you do need to be aware of is that uh, you'd go over here to create a camera, and uh, then I'd leave that camera layer selected, and then just go over here to create a peg for it. And that peg is the thing uh, that ends up uh, moving. And another cool thing about these peg layers is that I can actually detach the camera from it, okay? And then, so okay, you're not going to see, you're not seeing the camera moving at all, but uh, the peg layer still has all of its keyframes. And then, so if I wanted to, I could then drag it right back onto the peg layer, and then the camera again is uh, moving. And uh, Flash uh, CS4 does have uh, some Z depth uh, properties to it now, which you can animate, but they don't actually have a camera that you could do what I just uh, showed you with. You can't, you know, basically pan and zoom out uh, uh, with a standalone camera. So you're kind of always stuck to whatever uh, the stage is seeing. And if you were to do uh, a similar effect like this, uh, you basically have to put everything inside of a movie clip and then tween that forward. And um, I just don't think you're going to get uh, the same kind of control. Actually, I know you're not going to get the same kind of control. So that, uh, that about does it for um, some of the uh, main comparison points, I think, uh, between the two programs uh, from an animator's perspective. And of course, you know, Flash CS4 again is it's going to remain kind of the king for you know web development. But uh, you know, I think Adobe has moved away from it being a uh, character animation program, which uh, you, you know, for for those animators out there that have uh, been with the program for a long time, you know, it's well, it's not like we haven't seen the writing on the wall. <laughs> there hasn't been many versions that have done uh, much in the way for. Uh, helping us animate quicker. Uh, so, you know, it is nice that uh, there's another 2D uh, program out there like Animate that has uh, been, you know, really stepped up and I think is actually developed by um, people that are really familiar with, you know, what an animator uh, needs in their uh, little tool chest. All right, so that about does it. Bye.